Happy New Year, all subscribers. I think I'm probably in time to say that. It is, after all, the bank holiday of New Year. Hope you like my uh, Christmas present of a Derby County thing, which uh, lights up, of course. Uh, but that probably blinds my viewers too much, so I will not keep that on. Uh, in today's video, we're coming back with a history of your club, of course. There's going to be some other new ideas, though, floating in, but because it's New Year coming in. I'm going to have a match day vlog. I'm going down to a Coventry City to see Derby County versus Coventry City in the FA Cup. I'm also going to be going to various football clubs around Derby. And, of course, we're going to have a bit of trivia. Uh, so, hopefully, there's going to be some nice things coming up for you to stick around and subscribe to. But, of course, we're going to look at Doncaster Rovers today, the history of them. Uh, well, this club was actually formed in 1879 by Albert Jenkins. He was a fitter at Doncaster's Great Northern Railway Works. He gathered together some friends to play matches against the Yorkshire Institute for the deaf and dumb in September 1879. The Institute side took a 4-0 lead, but the game ended as a 4-all draw. On walking back from the game, the team took a rest at the Hall Cross and had a discussion in which they decided to play more and called themselves Doncaster Rovers. The first match under the name was on the 3rd of October 1879, a draw away at, against Raw Marsh. A club turned professional in 1885, and gradually they became the main team in the town, and appear to have had their first professional players in 1887-88. Rovers first entered the FA Cup in 1888-89, losing 9-1 to a nearby club of Rotherham Town at home. The season of 1890-91 was to be a significant move forward. The club were a founder member of the Midland Alliance League and came second. The following season saw them enter the Sheffield and Hallamshire FA Challenge Cup, beating Sheffield United 2-1 at Bramall Lane to win the final. That same season, they also moved up to the Midland League, becoming champions in 1896-97 and 1898-99. They were first elected to the Football League in 1901 as a replacement for New Brighton Tower. Their first season in the league was in fact for one when Doncaster achieved their highest position, 7th in the Football League 2nd Division. They only lasted two seasons in the league before being voted out in favour of local rivals Bradford City, having finished the 1902 season in the bottom three. They spent the following season in the Midland League only managing 11th place out of 18, but were elected back into Division 2. This time in 1904-05, Doncaster finished bottom with three wins, two draws and 29 losses, adrift by 12 points, gaining only eight points. An unfortunate st still standing record to this day. They were voted out of course then once again. The following several seasons saw them finish uh, lower mid-table of the Midland League. Till between 1910 and 1913, they had greater success. The last few years before the war, war mediocrity returned. And in August 1914, debts run up, to, oh, run up over the years led to a voluntary liquidation. However, a new club was formed in time for the 1914-15 season. I was accepted to the Midland League to continue where the old club had left off. The outbreak of the First World War meant the club closed down and the army took over its ground, using it as a depot. The club reformed as a limited company after the war in 1919, rejoining the Midland League a year later, playing at their new temporary Bennethorpe ground. Bennett Forbe ground, I think it is. The first two seasons, Rovers finished lower mid-table. The third season, they moved to Bellevue, finished runners-up and were accepted into the Football League Division 3 North for the 1923-24 season to replace Staley Bridge Celtic. Their first match back in the Football League was a 0-0 draw against Wigan Borough at Bellevue on the 25th of August 1923, with Rovers playing in red tops with white shorts. One of the players in that first match was Rovers legend Tom Keatley, who went on to become the club's highest scorer 
with 186 goals in 241 appearances. Doncaster ended the season in ninth place. The next few seasons saw them rise towards the top of the table, then decline again back towards the bottom. Before, in the early 1930s, finishing consistently near the top and finally becoming champions in 1934-35. Rovers spent two seasons in Division 2, relegated in 1936-37. However, they did well in the following two seasons before the outbreak of war, being runners-up in the Division 3 North, with only the champions being promoted at that time. Doncaster Rovers were involved in the longest ever competitive football match against Stockport County at Edgeley Park on the 30th of March 1946 in a Division 3 North Cup tie. The match was deadlocked 2 all at 90 minutes and after a two 10 minutes periods of extra time there was no further school. score. The rule at that time was that the game would carry on until one team scored. However after 203 minutes and with darkness closing in the game was finally stopped. Fans were said to have left the game gone home for their tea and come back to watch the end of the game. The replay at Doncaster's at Doncaster was won by Rovers 4-0. Goals coming from Stephen Bain, Billy Mortimer and a late double from Graham Doon. Which, I have to say, that record's unlikely to be broken. So it's an interesting stat there for you. You learn so much by watching this channel. In 1946-47, Doncaster set a record for the most games won in a league season. 33, when they won the division, the third division North title. The following season saw them relegated from the second division, but two years later, with Peter Doherty as, manage, as player manager, they won the third division North again. This time they stayed in the second division for eight seasons, their most successful period to date. During this time, several high-class players were with Doncaster, including Harry Gregg, who kept goal. I was sold to Manchester United in December 1957 for £23,500. At the time, he was the most expensive goalkeeper in the world. He went on to help save lives in the Munich air disaster and was a regular, air, a regular goalkeeper for Northern Ireland. Another player, lesser known outside of Doncaster, was Alec Jeffrey. Matt Busby, manager of, manager of Manchester United, had uh, lined him up to be brought. However, in October 1956, Geoffrey Bradley broke his leg playing for England's under-23s. This ended the move and any chance of what was seen to be an almost certain glittering international career to come. Billy Bremner, who achieved fame for his playing career with Leeds United in Scotland, managed Doncaster twice. His final spell ending in November 1991, six years before his death. Well, we're going to move on a bit now to during the early 1990s uh, with a manager or an owner rather called Ken Richardson. I oh, know, very hated by the Doncaster Rovers fans and wished that he'd be burnt at the stake. Uh, he was actually later described by detectives as the type that would trample a two-year-old child to pick up a 2p bit. He took over as the majority shareholder of a club, um, and he ploughed a lot of money, actually, into Doncaster Rovers. But this was only with one thing in mind, a new stadium. Which, when he was refused a new stadium by the council, he soon lost interest. Richardson actually hired three men to tort Bellevue and planned to sell the ground to developers. The attempt put Richardson in jail for four years, ruined Bellevue, and Rovers were edging closer to relegation. In 1998, Rovers dropped out of the league with a minus 83 goal difference. He withdrew his financial backing, and as a result, the club was subject to an administration order. The better players left to ease some of the financial burden, but unfortunately, the players who were left at Rovers were just not up to the task. The fans blamed Richardson for effectively destroying Rovers, and even a funeral was held at Bellevue on the last game of the 1997-98 season, complete with coffin along Car House Road. Just weeks after Rovers were relegated, Richardson was found guilty of trying to fire uh, to set fire to the Rovers ground, apparently hoping to pay off the club's debts with the insurance money. 
The West Ferry Consortium, though, took over the club just before the beginning of the 1998-99 season, with a commitment to invest heavily in the club. The details of this season are collected in Ian McMahon's book, The Only Way Is Up, which I thoroughly recommend you to read. They also brought in John Ryan as a non-executive chairman, and he took over at the end of this season. Having aspirations of returning to the second tier, where he had seen them when he was a boy. He stated he would build a new stadium within 10 years, both of which he went on to achieve within the 10 years. Doncaster found their best form in the 50 years since back of the day when they were in the second tier, during the 2000s. After five seasons in the Conference League under the helmet manager Dave Penny, the club returned to the fourth tier, known at the the time as Division 3, after winning the 2003 Conference Playoff Final. In the only sudden death goal, also known as the Golden Goal, Goal and officially known as a promotion goal in this game, in history of English football promotion playoffs. In 2003-04, the first season they were back in the Football League, Rovers achieved promotion to the third tier as champions. Doncaster were the first team to win the fourth stroke, the fourth division stroke, third division playoffs, the fourth level basically, championship three times in 1966, 1969 and 2004. Football League rules state that any team who wins a trophy three times can keep it. When Rovers tried to retain ownership of the actual third division trophy, the Football League claimed that Rovers could not keep the trophy because the league names had changed from fourth to third division, and so they had not won that particular trophy, that particular league, three times. Doncaster were actually the last team to win Division Three before it was renamed League Two. I feel sorry for uh, Doncaster fans. I think the EFL are being a bit harsh on you there, but I think it's just so they don't have to make a new trophy. In 2005-06, Doncaster beat two Premiership teams in the League Cup, Manchester City and Aston Villa. They reached the quarterfinals of the competition, where they met Arsenal. They went ahead in normal time, and Arsenal equalised. And in extra time, Rovers went up for a second time, but Gilberto Silva equalised in injury time, and the North London side went on to win on penalties. Penny left in August 2006, feeling he had taken the club as far as he could, and was swiftly replaced with former AFC Bournemouth manager Sean O'Driscoll, with Richard O'Kelly as the system manager. A new stadium was completed in December 2006, with Doncaster's first game at the new Keepmo Stadium being against Huddersfield Town on New Year's Day 2007. So I'm sure that's bringing that happy memories to you all. I am Doncaster fans. And the first goal scored at the stadium was by Mark McCammon. On the 1st of April 2007, Doncaster Rovers travelled with their new manager to the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff to play Bristol Rovers in the Football League Trophy Final. Playing in front of over 59,000 people, this was Rovers' first Major Cup Final in the club's history. They got off to the perfect start when a tap-in from Jonathan Forte and a brilliant finish from Paul Hefferman put Rovers 2-0 up within the first five minutes. However, after a brave fight back from Bristol Rovers, the game finished 2 all, so it went to extra time. In the second half of extra time, a Sean Thornton goal corner was headed home by a skipper Graham Lee, who had come forward from his central defensive position. Doncaster hold on to claim their first major trophy. 2007-8 proved to be one of the most exciting seasons in Doncaster's history. After a slow start, they were in serious contention for a top six finish for much of the second half of the season. Defeat away at Cheltenham Town in the final day of the season cost them automatic promotion, and they finished third, with Nottingham Forest taking second place. After a 0-0 draw away to Southend United in the playoff semi-finals first leg, Rovers beat their opponents 5-1 at home in the second leg, including a James Coppinger hat-trick to advance to the League One playoff final at Wembley on Sunday the 25th of May 2008, where they beat Leeds United 1-0 to move into the Football League Championship 
after her half a century absence. A James Hayter headed goal in the 47th minute was enough to secure victory in front of over 75,000 fans at Wembley. The first half of the 2008-9 season saw Doncaster struggling to adapt to the championship, despite a promising start with an away win over newly relegated Derby County. A long run of bad results saw them bottom of the championship on the 20th of December 2008, following a narrow 1-0 defeat to Wolves at home. The Rovers uh, managed to turn things around soon after and enjoyed an undefeated run of eight championship games, starting with a thrilling 4-2 win at relegation rivals Nottingham Forest on Boxing Day. The win against Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday the 14th of February was especially memorable, considering it was the first time Doncaster had defeated the Owls in any league competition. The streak ended at the hands of Swansea City on Saturday the 21st of February, after a 3-1 defeat at the Liberty Stadium. Doncaster Rovers secured their place in the Championship for the 2009-10 season, after an emphatic 3-0 win at Home Park against Plymouth Argyle. Doncaster ended their first season in the Championship comfortably in 14th position, finishing above eight former Premier League teams, including Charlton Athletic, Watford, Crystal Palace and Derby County. The survival was also a major feat, as before the start of the season, they were tipped by many a strong favourite from relegation. Doncaster finished the 2009-10 season marginally better than their third season back in the Championship in 12th, and earning two more points from the previous season with 60 points. This was despite a promising period towards the end of the season, which saw Doncaster close to the playoff places, thanks in part to Sheffield United loanee Billy Sharp who scored 15 goals during his stay. The 2009-10 season success became a Football League record, having become the first team to be bottom of the table at Christmas, but still survive, managed to survive a drop. The 2010-11 season proved to be Doncaster's most trying season in the Championship thus far. Despite a club record signing of £1.15 million for Billy Sharp, the season was plagued by injuries to key players as well as poor form. They finished in 21st place, six points clear of relegated local rivals Sheffield United and Scunthorpe United. Rovers struggled in the 2011-12 season, seven games into the season. Rovers failed to win a game with no wins at all, but one draw and six losses. This led to the sacking of manager Sean O'Driscoll and assistant manager Richard O'Kelly. On the 23rd of September 2011, Dean Saunders was unveiled as the new boss, leaving Wrexham. His reign started unbeaten in three games, with the controversial help of football agent Willie McKay. Rovers brought in several players on loan and short-term contracts and on low wages, including El Haji Diouf, Pascal Chimbonda, Harita Ilunga, Carl Ikeme, Frederick Picione, and Habib Bey. Sorry if I pronounced any of them wrong. However, Doncaster were relegated to League One with three games still to play. Many supporters blame the failure to stay in the Championship on McKay's involvement. Others felt it was worth a try. At the end of the 2011 12 season, Chairman John Ryan deemed the McKay experiment over as it didn't work and won't work in the third tier anyway. The, two, the squad was rebuilt for the 2012-13 season, with 19 players leaving. Expectations were low, but after an average start, Saunders' team ended up firmly in the promotion positions by the end of 2012. On the 7th of January, Saunders filled the vacant manager's position at Wolves. And on the 17th of January, the caretaker manager, Brian Flynn, was given the permanent manager's job till the end of the season, with Rob Jones as player coach. In an incredible final finale to the season at Griffin Park, they beat Brentford 1-0, when James Coppinger scored in the last seconds of five minutes of added time. Only seconds after Brentford's Marcello, Marcelo Trotter had hit a penalty against the crossbar. If Brentford had won, they would have been promoted and Doncaster would have to compete in the playoffs. 
as it was for goal put Doncaster one point above Bournemouth as champions. Following promotion to the Championship for the 2013-14 season, Brian Flynn was moved to become Director of Football and overseeing the newly reformed, newly formed development squad, which would be playing competitive games. Paul Dickoff was brought in as a manager, with Brian Horton as his assistant. To boost support for their chosen charity, Bluebell Wood Children's Hospice, the club signed singer Louis Tomlinson on a non-contract basis. Bit odd, man. On the 9th of November, John Ryan gave an emotional farewell and stepped down as chairman of the club after 15 years. Minutes before the kick-off against a championship encounter against Barnsley at Oakwell, amid reports of boardroom disagreements following a proposed takeover bid by a hedge fund consortium led by Sequencia Capital. Never get a hedge fund in charge of you. You'll find out in the coming episodes I'm making on this, of current upcoming videos I'm making on this channel. Why not? On the 3rd of May 2014, Doncaster were relegated back to League One after just one season, following a 1-0 defeat to Leicester City on the final day of the season. Rovers finished the 2014-15 season in 13th place, before being relegated to League Two after finishing 21st in 2015-16, with new manager Darren Ferguson. The 2016-17 season saw them being promoted back to League One at the first attempt in third position. Darren Ferguson left his post in June 2017 and was replaced by another former Peterborough boss in Grant McCann, ahead of a 2018-19 season. Under McCann, Rovers finished sixth in League One, qualifying for the end of the season playoffs, where they faced Charlton Athletic over two legs. A 2-1 defeat in the first leg and an early Christian Bielik goal in the second left Rovers with a mountain to climb out of the valley. But goals from captain Tommy Rowe and Andy Butler forced extra time. John Marquise put Rovers ahead for the first time in extra time, under the da- only for Darren Prattley to equalise a minute later. Rovers lost the penalty shootout 4-3, with misses coming from Rowe and Marquise as they fell just short of making Wembley Stadium showdown. McCann left in the summer for championship side Hull City, and was replaced by former defender Darren Moore, head of a 2019-20 campaign. Moore moved to a struggling Sheffield Wednesday on the 1st of March 2021, and Andy Butler was appointed as interim manager for the remainder of the season. For the 2021-22 season, former trophy-winning Doncaster Rovers player Richie Wellens was installed as first team manager, with Noel Hunt as his assistant manager. I don't... Is he... Still, no, he's not in charge anymore because they have had such a torrid time. I don't know when they did sign their manager, but they've now got Gary McSheffrey in charge. I hope things do improve for you, Doncaster. You seem to be hit a bit on hard times recently. But please subscribe if you are a Doncaster fan, or even if you're not, I love to see you around. More subscribers are always welcome. And I'm always willing to talk to you in the comment section down below if you want to. So I uh, sort of subtly hinted earlier about talking about hedge funds and I talked about Richardson. Well, I'm going to be looking at coming up over uh, January in the sort of trivial ones about uh, administration. Derby in administration at the moment, so I thought I'd cover uh, each club since the 1980s administration, how they sort of fared, uh, and I think that'll be probably a three-parter one, because uh, there has been a lot. Uh, I'm also going to the football on Saturday, and there'll be a match day vlog for that, so please do join in for whatever you want. Bye for now, though.